What's good, YouTube? As you see from the video title, today we're gonna talk about pricing for music videos when it comes to shooting with the FX3 versus shooting with the A7R2. But yeah, I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna get right into it. So let me start off by saying, I'm not gonna give the full details of like what I would be charging people because it's different for everybody, depending on how people want the video shot, if it's more of a cinematic video or if it's one with high effects, how long is the song, storyline, story plot. There's a lot of that goes into the treatment itself. I'm gonna give you guys the base price of what I would be starting at normally for anybody when it comes to shooting with the FX3 or when it comes to shooting with the a7R2. Starting base price for the Sony A7R2, the base price will be $300 to shoot a run and gun video. If it's more complex than that, the price will change. The base video for shooting with the FX3 will be $500. Again, depending on the concept of the video and how it's shot, that price will vary as well. But the base will be $300 and the base is $500 when it comes to music videos for my clients. So let's get into why it's that much for the FX3 versus that. So first things first, the image quality is the main difference when it comes to shooting between these two cameras. The image quality for the FX3, you are now shooting at 4K, 120 frames per second versus shooting at 4K, 30 frames per second. When it comes to shooting full HD, this shoots at 240 frames a second and this shoots at 60 frames per second. That's the drastic difference when it comes to smooth butter slow motion. If you want a smooth, crisp low motion like you can see the difference right now when i'm spinning this quarter look at the difference between the 120 frames per second versus the 60 frames per second next let's talk about night shooting so shooting at night you can see the image quality with the fx3 i went out shooting at night in the rain you can see the colors the clarity in this video right now of the bus going over the water it's very clean and crisp. Very, very good at night shooting. Me shooting with the A7R in the past, I have had, I'm not gonna lie, it was good. As long as I had some sort of light with it. If I had like a, I'm using my little flat uh, LED light. This light is good for when I'm at night and I'm shooting with that. I can go out and shoot with the FX3 in pure darkness. So yes, the night shooting is insane for the FX3. So the ISO range for shooting with the FX3 starts at 80 and it goes to 102, 102 1400 and it expands and it goes as low as 50 to 409,600. The ISO range of the A7R2 is 100 to 25,600 and expands from 50 all the way to 102,000. So as you can see, the FX3 shoots way better in the low light. The ISO range is way higher. So shooting at night will be crystal clear. So let's talk about weather. So the A7R2 honestly has been through rain, snow, sleet, dry heat. Like it's been through a lot, even on the beach with the sand. Oh my gosh, it was it's crazy. I, I've done a lot of a lot of shooting with the A7R2. I went on the water on the jet skis. So the Sony A7R2 is very mediocre when it comes to being weather sealed and weather protected. But and I still did all those shootings I did in the past on the beach and the snow and the rain, all with the A7R, and it held up pretty good. It shoots amazing right now. So imagine now shooting with the FX3. This is completely weather sealed and I went out shooting in the rain with it the other night. I wasn't even in the rain. I was more of like under the bridge, more like drizzle hitting it, but nothing crazy because I was afraid because it was a new camera. But it is fully weather sealed, so that should be exciting in the future. So one thing I actually favor now for when I shoot, the A7R2 screen only tilts to a certain extent. So that is what it can do. The FX3 screen can do a fully articulated 360, you feel me? I can turn the screen up and down, boom, boom, boom. That helps me a lot when I come to shooting myself and shooting people who need it. Like if someone is posted up for a music video and needs to rap to the camera, but they need to get low because it's a wide, like fish eye. They need to see their stuff. They can't see themselves. But now I can turn the camera and let them really work so they can really see themselves to really get a groove. That's a big plus when it comes to shooting. I'm not gonna lie. The FX3 also has a 10 bit 422 color sampling. I don't know if y'all know what that means, but basically, them motherfucker really can get the colors going. So, very good when it comes to I can shoot and log and I can really bring out the colors when I edit. I can really make them pop more so than when I shoot with the A7R2. Let's talk about the autofocus. So the autofocus with the, a, or the A7R2, it's honestly, it's iffy. It's good, but it's also not good. Sometimes it can catch and sometimes it doesn't. So it's iffy, but the FX3's autofocus is absolutely insane. I can touch the screen to focus where I want it to focus. So if, say I have a quick shot to look somewhere else, I can touch the screen and instantly focus and it gives you that drastic blur to focus. Um, effect when you're shooting 
Um, as I said, the FX3 is also touchscreen. A7R2 is not. So let's talk about weight. When it comes to weight, FX3, little bit heavier than the A7R. This weighs 716 grams, which I believe is around 1.5 pounds, 1.6 pounds. The A7R2 weighs 625 kilograms, which I believe is like 1.34 pounds, something like that. The A7R2 is a little bit lighter, not much of a drastic difference, you can't really tell. The battery life, I can already tell the difference. This has, I believe, this has 600 shots worth of battery life, and this has 290 shots worth of battery life. An average mirrorless camera shoots, I believe, around 391 shots for battery life. FX3 does not have a recording limit, that's a plus. And last but not least, the retail price of the cameras. The A7R2, I believe when I bought it was 1500, so 1499. Sony FX3 is around $4,000, so it's 3899, something like that. Built-in tank right here. But yeah, that's pretty much everything my clients really would really care about when it comes to shooting with the higher price versus the lower price camera. So price will always be higher when it comes to shooting in the cinema line camera. This is one step below, basically, movie cameras is like right below that line of movie cameras, you know what I'm saying? So it is a cinema line camera, so it is technically the first movie handheld camera. So that's where we get the price range for that. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's really up to my clients. Either way, I can make the magic happen with both cameras, you know what I'm saying? That's why I really wanted to clarify when it comes down to pricing with my uh shoots and keeping it simple so so thank y'all for tuning in tune into the next one man peace